export permissions. Um, when the patch becomes available from Oracle, um, obviously you should install those as well. Um, everyone installs patches here, right? Within the first six months? Um, yeah, I reported this back to Oracle um, last year, and I was hoping that it was going to be patched um, in the CPU, but since we're a limited audience, I've decided to, to go ahead with the talk. There is going to be a, a white paper that will be released uh, to the general public at a much later date when Oracle have actually released um, you know, fixes for this. Um, but until such time, the actual paper um, will, will not be made public. So you're getting a sneak preview, so shh. Okay, so has Oracle security posture improved? Um, yes, it has. It's improved a great deal. And uh, as much as it pains me to say it, well done, Oracle, you know? Um, I'm not so sure, however, that their SDL processes, SDL is the security development life cycle that, you know, sort of was, uh, I, I, I'm not going to say invented by Microsoft because there were security development life cycles out there before, but certainly made famous by, by uh, Microsoft. Um, Mike Howard, uh, great, uh, great guy, did a lot of excellent work there, um, and Steve Lipner and so on. Now, what SDL does, basically, it goes through every single stage of your development process, right from the drawing board stage all the way through to the, to the very end, and it's a continuing process. So even when the product has been released, you're constantly you know, trying to improve on, on that code to ensure that there's, there's, there's nothing wrong. Now, why are these bugs in there? They're not you, you know, your typical SQL injection bugs. They're, you, they're not your typical um, buffer overflows. But they are still bugs, but they're, they're interesting. It's slipped through the net somehow. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I want to know which Plonker thought that was a good idea. At the development stage, you know, prior to the development stage, they actually, um, someone should have said, that should have been caught there and then, and said, actually, this is dangerous. This is not a good idea. Um, so if they'd done that at the requirements or the design phases, uh, this, it wouldn't have gotten any further. And as you can see, because they're so subtle in the, in the way they work, Unless you know what, like um, the uh, DBMS import Java, uh, export uh, Java permissions does, you're not going to really look at the permissions, see where the public has executed on it, and, and so on. So that slipped through the net simply because, um, actually, re reverse that. A, a later code review or pen test would not have found that as easier as finding it in, in the design stages, because there's a lot of code to go through, and, and so on. There's the second one, which is the, um, the executing arbitrary SQL through the DBMS Java um, set output to, to Java uh, function. Unless you actually read the documentation, you don't know that it's actually kicking off a, a new a JVM with a new session state and so on. So these things are very subtle in the way they've slipped through. So it's, Oracle really can't be blamed for these getting in the, well they can, sorry, let me rephrase that. They should have been caught at stage one, but once they got past that stage, once they entered the code, it would be really, really difficult to find these flaws as far as I'm concerned. Um, unless you're a super uber hacker like me, of course. You know, but, um, that, that was me being ironic, by the way, or attempting to be, or making a joke. Uh, I'm not that conceited. Well, maybe I am. Um, <laughs> So the question is, why weren't they caught at the late, late stages? I think it's really difficult to have, spot, to have, to have had spot these things at, at the later stage. I think Oracle rely too heavily on their security tools. They're using them as the goalkeeper. Actually, you guys don't watch something. In, in Britain, we play football, which actually we use our feet for. You guys could play football and use your hands, right? It's um, <laughs> soccer, what we call football in the UK, we have goalkeepers, you know, to prevent people from scoring goals. A goal is the we square thing at the end and people will boot the, into the net and stuff, okay? Um, they're using their tools too much as goalkeepers as far as I'm concerned. They're thinking we can code the way we normally do. We can develop and think of our ideas the way we normally do because our code will save us. Our, our, our security tools will save us, and they don't. And whilst they do in a lot of cases, and we've seen that there are very few SQL injection flaws in in 11G release one now, and even 10G release two is vastly better than 10G release one because of these tools and everything like that. Um, I think there's still too much reliance on these tools. Um, so in conclusion, uh, they don't have to go all the way back to the drawing board. Um, they just need to tweak it, tweak it a little. So if 
if I was a teacher and I was giving Oracle a grade, I'd give them a B plus. Um, and yeah, with a, a wee bit more work, they would definitely get an A minus. Uh, still not there, but vastly, vastly, vastly more superior to where they were even two years ago. You know, so um, round of applause, Oracle. You know, you know, and that. Ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the talk, so I'll see if there's any questions. Yep, sure, gentlemen, in the back. Well, yeah, um, the, the easiest way is doing it in, in DLL main. Um, if, if we don't put it in DL main, DL, DLL main, uh, what happens is that nothing will ever call the code. So let's say we had a function called foobar. Nothing, or the Oracle process would never call foobar, so it would just remain, the code would remain there and, and do nothing. Uh, you know, so that's why we put in DLL main. Oh, no, well, no, once from DLL main, we can kick off threads, we can do what we want, and, you know, we can put more functions in there and call them. But I'm just saying, if, if we have a, a function uh, called foobar, and you know, up, upload that. Fubar will never be called. So we need a way of triggering that, and, and that's through DLL main. So it has to be DLL main. Correct. Yeah. Any other questions? Is there a question there? Yeah, the JVM is running inside the Oracle process. Correct. That's, that's running on Windows as some sort of server. Yeah, the Oracle process is, is running as a system service. And the JVM is inside that Oracle process, basically. It's within the address space of the Oracle process. And on, on Linux as well, the, the processes are divided amongst, you know, like the shadow process and the, the, the database log writer reader and everything like that. They're all in different processes, but it's still within the main Oracle process. It's not like kicking off a Java process. Any other questions? We've got um, 10 minutes, so you get an extra wee break. I'd like to thank everybody for coming to the talk. I hope it's been useful for you. And uh, yeah, thank you.